What is good? We're back. And today we're going all Dolphins all day. We got a Tyree Kill trade that we got to talk about. But first, we got we got the full on tripod. We got a you know an in studio guest in Big Co. and and we got uh, Jason over here on the ones and twos, just cracking a fresh one for you. How's everybody doing? Jay all righty then. All righty then. Got old school Dolphins logo. That's one of you know. Jason's been a fan of at least half of the NFL. I'm uh, a fan so, of the whole NFL. You know, there's true. There's one of his many uh, old school shirts. Yep. To bring out that old school Seahawks shirt next. Mm. What do we got today? We're gonna go Miami Dolphins, and obviously there was a a Tyreek trade here. Uh, really spurred this this podcast, but we want to we want to dive into kind of everything. Dolphins a little bit, so we're going to talk Tyreek, we're going to talk Waddle, we're going to talk a little Gusecki, a little Tua, uh, so we're going to try to get through as much as we can here and and and, uh, and ride out. So, which, we got Big Co here today, so who knows? <laughs> who knows? Short and sweet, baby. <laughs> Short and sweet. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment below if you're listening on the podcast. Hit us with those five-star reviews. It's much appreciated, and it helps us out tremendously. So... Tyreek Hill traded to the Dolphins, just comes out of left field. Chiefs say they tried to pay him, couldn't quite get to where they needed to get to. Um, Dolphins hop right up in there and they're like, hey, you know, we'll, we'll put up some, we got some capital and we'll spend some cash. We need to make know? it look like we're not trying to lose. Yeah, we got to beat some charges. So Jeffrey or Jeffrey Ross, I think is his name. Steven, Steven Ross. Steven Ross. One of the Stephen. Rosses. Um, He's he's out there. He's like, hey, you know, we're not we're not throwing games over here. Here's 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 thirty million a year for you. We'll take Armstead. You know, we'll, we'll get this new coach. Uh, Obviously, trying to win. You know, we're we're trying to win. Of course, I'm not trying to throw games. So, um, but I think most people are viewing the Tyreek as a downgrade because you're leaving the most potentially the most prolific passing game. Um, Consistently the most prolific right. passing game in the last. Some people are starting years. to catch up and it's starting to, you know, maybe you saw some chinks in the armor in this last season. Uh, but, you know, through 17 games last last year, Tyreek had 155 targets. That's good for seven. 111 receptions. That's good for three. Uh, 1,239 yards. That's good for six. Um, and nine touchdowns. That's good for, for nine. Um, his yak, he was number 11 with 447. Uh, number 12 at 2.11 yards per route run. Uh, so number three in air yards. Deep targets, number nine with 26. Red zone targets, uh, 24, number six. Target rate, 29.7, number six. So those are all numbers. So you're saying he crushed it. He crushed it. Oh, His okay. fantasy points per game was, what again, like to me. number six. There wasn't a whole lot of double-digit numbers in there as far as his ranking throughout the league here. Fantasy points per game, uh, 17.4. He's also been in the top 15 of ADP since basically 2018. Right. So this is we're, we're talking about a high, a high caliber asset. And I think, again, like the, the, the news broke and, and there's everybody's, you know, a little bummed and, you know, hey, what's up with Waddle and now Tyreek and what do we do with him? Um, so, you know, he might have been back into the first startup kind of stuff you were saying 15 so that put him you know he, he could be up in that right at the end and then kind of right at the top of the second there. Which in March he was eight. Right. So that's before this news broke, obviously. So, you know, we obviously I think it's, it's warranted to move him down a little bit. Got it. You're probably not taking him above AJ Brown or CD or um, maybe even his his comrade in Waddle at this point. Uh, but you know we'll we'll, we'll kind of get into that a little later. And we'll probably drop some down maybe into that next tier with guys like you know maybe T, Cup, Devonte Adams, Chris Godwin, DJ Moore, Debo, Diggs. Um, so I think I think that's kind of the discussion we need to have of of where we kind of rank this guy, what what tier he falls in. Does he fall down even into another tier? Um, but you know, maybe before we get quite to that, I think the linchpin and the crux of this whole thing is is maybe Tua, which I know nobody really wants to talk about, especially Hate when him. you're talking about with this Hate sexy him. thing in Tyreek. Um, but I think it's warranted here because you you immediately go, oh well, this is a downgrade, and of course it is a downgrade to go from Tua to Patrick Mahomes. From Mahomes to Tua. And right. why didn't the Chiefs want to pay him? I think they did try to pay him. I think I think Andy Reid said it's they tried enough. to pay him. They like couldn't they figure just, it out? You know, that's a red flag. 
dislike yeah. dislike category Agreed. right there. Agree. I think they they couldn't figure it out. Devontae got Devontae money, and they they could they didn't have enough money to go around to figure out how to get Tyreek enough money. Is is kind of what they say. I'm not I'm not necessarily viewing that as a red flag. Uh, the, I would say that you made a comment when we did a, a little talk on Patreon about this. Um, about does the know, money make him content? Right. You to get that much money, I I, I felt kind of bad after that episode uh, did I go in a little too hard on character of a man I don't know you know but just if it's me in my dynasty stock my dynasty ranking of Tyreek Hill of course you leave Patrick Mahomes but also the, the amount of money guaranteed the man really can if got I'm not, a ship hope obviously got I, his nobody, money. nobody thinks he's going to fool Albert Hainsworth right but he could definitely Things aren't going his he way. Dial maybe it back a little bit. Maybe you dial it back because he's got so much money guaranteed. Sure. He doesn't. It, he he doesn't have to play any more football. We think he will, right. and I'm sure there's something in the contract that says, you know, if you don't play, you get this and this and this. But the guaranteed is the guaranteed, right. and that's so much money guaranteed. Maybe he's a gamer for. I mean, he's every snap he ever took as a chief looked like he was trying harder than anybody else on the field. Right. But who knows where it goes from here? And the question mark there for me dings him. In addition yeah, to I think, leaving Mahomes, my bad. I took it back to Tyreek. No, no, I think, I think no, no. I think that's a fair. I think that's a fair uh, talking point, and I think it should at least be in the back of your mind a little bit that there there isn't maybe not the the cleanest of character. Who that, knows that? Who you knows? know, but a lot of allegations. Right. Allegations all came back fine, but um, you know, just I think that's never a, that's, got suspended. That's a fair point. You never know what guys are going to do after that big payday. They're moving teams. It may not be as fun to be on the Miami Dolphins, uh, but let's let's get into Tua, who who is again the linchpin and is going to make this fun. So the first thing you say is, is those air yards for Tyreek are probably not going to be there. Uh, that's that's a that's a Can't holy be. grail of stats that people love. Can't be um, or metrics that people love rather. Um, but you know, Tua in the deep ball completion, number one, fifty percent. That's that's a that's a fact. That's straight fact. Straight fact. Gotta be small sample size. Can't be can't be throwing it that much if he's got fifty percent completion. But it right. is. But the straight facts, he's number one. Right. And then you know, but his air yards per attempt, six point nine. 33rd so that's <laughs> that, that again exactly. you know we got to take the good with the definitely, bad definitely definitely uh, but the accuracy rating uh according to player profile is is 8.0 that's good for number three in the league so accurate mm-hmm. guy here ball didn't have to travel as far right uh, but that's always been signed kind, of, kind of to his deal here but now we got Tyreek and we got Waddle and we got Gasecki to He's another to, to another uh, one year deal. We got Cedric Wilson, who mm-hmm. any injuries or three wides, uh, solid slot, solid third receiver, Real very solid. good. Solid a little third. bit bummed actually that Tyreek came because I was enjoying some steady will. Uh, and they, they brought in Edmonds, Mostert, and Gaskin. They had uh, so you know there's there's all of a sudden there's a tremendous amount of talent. Around Tyree Kill, and we are uh, around Tua, uh, Tua Tonga Vailoa here. And can he support? Right. So, an age old argument back when you trying to bring these prospects, college prospects, in is oh, well, he's surrounded by all this talent. Is the talent making him or is he making the talent? Well, I mean, Pretty he's, much. he's surrounded by great talent. And by the way, one of those guys was a guy that he already just threw 104 passes to or had 104 receptions with him who played with him last year, who was on his way on a trajectory of being a super great dynasty asset and Jalen Waddle here. And now you surrounded him with all these other assets. And when and when Tua was surrounded by great talent at Alabama, what did he do? He crushed it in 2018, right? 15 games, so that's a big sample size there. Alabama plays a lot of games. 245 completions, 355 attempts. That's good for 69 completion percentage. Almost 4,000 yards, 43 touchdowns, four interceptions. Looking at the deep ball. How many? Right. <clears throat> four. 43 four. touchdowns to four picks. Right. Again, surrounded by all that talent. You know, you get all jazzed up about, oh, well, and then well, who makes who? And it's like, it doesn't matter anymore. He's about to be surrounded by fucking talent. And last time this happened, he came out there and people were tanking for fucking Tua. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what his deep ball accuracy percentage was that year in college? First. 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 59.6%. Okay. So even better. And only two deep ball drops by those receivers. So... Good ball and playing with studs, which he's now doing in Miami. Right. So accurate, 
Maybe a little bit better deep ball than people want to give him credit for. Not the strongest of arms, but you surround him with talent. He can get it there. The deep ball completion again in the NFL, best 50%, um, his percentage there. And then again, going back to the college, just to hammer these homes, first and deep ball completion percentage at, at 59.6. Uh, uh, so he's he's out there doing well, at least when surrounded by talent. And last year, it, it was pretty good. And then um, not only did they upgrade the talent skill position wise, they did bring in some offensive linemen right. as well. Correct. Well, well they bring in an, a whole new scheme with an offensive coach. Get out of the defensive coach. Which do you think in Alabama Kyle Shanahan he had a good scheme and good coaches? Yeah. Okay. Pretty pretty elite level things as well as a decent you know elite level all around which is, is where we're at here. And then now you bring in a, a mind that, that is exciting to a lot of people. Kyle Shanahan and Jimmy Garoppolo call him one of the best minds in football. Mike um, McDaniel. Scientist. Mike McDaniel went to Yale. Um, Anyone that wears glasses looks like a scientist. Sounds anybody like that wears undershirts under a dress football. shirt in a team in a picture is, is a G. Uh, so I really enjoyed that. Um, <laughs> but... So you're getting to it. You're surrounding him with talent. You're bringing in a new scheme. You're bringing in all sorts of offensive linemen. Well, not all sorts, but you brought in a good left tackle in Armstead from the Saints, who is a, just a stalwart of being a protector over there. And you brought in um, Connor Williams from the Cowboys. Um, now, might not be the sexiest pick ever, but they're they're speculating that he, they're going to kind of anchor that left side. Right side is the blind side with two of But they still have three former high-end picks in Austin Jackson, Liam Ek- Ek- Eichenberg, and Robert Hunt to kind of fill out those positions as well as a decent amount of capital that if they wanted to, to stab at those, another bring in somebody else to have high level competition on that line. All you need to do is get one or two guys that could just be decent. And all of a sudden you got a, a much better offensive line. Average time on dropbacks for two was 2.53. That's good for 36. Now, some of that is that low a dot. That's right. And that, that, uh, Waddle's a dot is, is going to be 6.3. That's good for 103. So, you know, when, right. when so 138 of your attempts are going to the guy who's a dot is 6.3, you know, you're obviously going to be releasing the ball pretty quick. Yeah. Right. And that, that ranking is, is has him in the bottom of the league, obviously, but it doesn't account for how much time you could have had. It's just right. how much time you took. Right. She wasn't taking very much time to throw the ball, which is a, you got a bad offensive line. B you got an accurate quarterback and C you got a guy like Waddle who was being successful around. So, you know, you know, you don't have a lot of time. So let's get the ball out quick to an effective receiver. And that just so happened to be uh, Jalen Waddle. So you again, bring in Mike McDaniel, who, has been with Kyle Shanahan pretty much his own, just about his entire career since he was on his dad's staff in Denver. They had like one year apart where McDaniel uh, went to um, the CFL, I believe. But other than that, they've been tied to the hip. And this guy has been behind the scenes. Everybody that knows him, everybody that talks about him is this dude is just a genius, uh, has to dumb things down to talk to everybody. Um, so and and it's and the guys, rude then, the right? guys love him. Yeah. Like they just love him. Right. They're bringing in a guy who maybe he'll be over his skis here. Um, but one thing that you're going to do is you're going to bring in a lot of these Niner concepts. I'm sure you're, like, you're not just going to go there and be like, hey, we're not doing any of that. <laughs> the guy that I've been tied to forever. <laughs> yeah. We're, Fuck start, that guy. <laughs> start over. So what you're bringing I hated in all of it is you got elite talent everywhere. You have an elite what we would assume to be a schemer in McDaniel and a guy who is accurate with the ball. Now, you're telling me that Tua Tagovailoa can at least be Kirk Cousins in this situation? Like, you, he can't support two top 24 wide receivers? Because he's done that at times in his career when Thielen was a little younger and healthy at stretches. He supported Justin Jefferson and Thielen at a high level and hey, crushed it with those guys. Those, right. That season. So, I, you know, and then I, think that's, I think that's a baseline for where Tua could be. I think he's better than that. Like, I think he can elevate you a little bit more than that. Uh, we, we that was really to his first season that we got to see last year, um, and he still missed some games, and that that may be a little bit of a of a red flag there. But you're going to get a lot of play action. You're going to get a lot of yak opportunity, which all all, all of a sudden Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, Tyree Kill, uh, two fastest receivers in the league, and and two of the best yak receivers in the league. I'm trying to find the yak here somewhere. I have it. Uh, 447, good for number 11 for for. Uh, Tyreek and for Waddle, uh, 443 at number 10 is, is where I have uh, Jalen Waddle. So those are two of the top 10 yak guys in the entire league. Now on the same team. Now in the same team, in with the same scheme. Better with schemer. The, probably the best yak scheming offensive mind, or at least coming from the best yak scheming tree sure. possible. So do the air yards have to absolutely be there for all these guys to succeed? Absolutely not. 
who's going to be the guy? I don't know, but it seems like Jalen Waddle has the edge of who's going to be the guy. He's already got time with Tua, and we've seen what kind of that can do when Stafford comes in and cups the guy or, you know. Good. Time with Tua in the pros and college. Right, exactly. Good point. Good point. But you also have Tua. You know what they're about to do. They're about to run some play action. Even if they're not running the ball well, they're going to run a lot of play action. Just so happens that <clears throat> Tua Tonga Lilo is – Play action uh, completion percentage is at 69. That's good for number four. Straight facts. Um, more numbers. Keeping it real. So he's he's kind of built for what you could do here. Now, obviously, the Niners have been trying to find a guy with legs to add that extra little gear there to what yeah. they could do. But but I think, too, is very well, as we've seen in college, when you surround him, he, he can facilitate plenty of people and get the ball down the field. He cannot turn it over, which is a – a must. Forty something touchdowns and four picks in that eighteen season. That blows my mind. Obviously, the same type of team, same scheme, and Mac Jones comes in and crushes it too. But two was you almost forget how good that was because Mac Jones did it, and and in that same era was um, Joe Burrow. In that college football just blew you know those stats, but like you forget how good Tua right. was. Right, and then like you said, we were all tanking for Tua. Now a few he years sucks. Ago. Now nobody wants him. You've been pro Tua from the get from the jump. Let's I said just, let's just. I just. I'm just pro anybody. Gives the man a you fucking are, second. You here. are pro. Give him some time. Right. You are pro. Let's not just jump all over him and and bury him. And after if you've actually watched, I mean, he has progressed and gotten better, and and he was able to make Jalen Waddle into an asset that was, you know, I was super excited to draft, and I, I think I I still am. Do you want to do a little Tua super flex ranking before we move on? If if you want to, I mean, like, would you take him over any of the rookies last year? So you got Trevor, Lance, Fields. No, I, Mac I, I, Jones. I mean, yeah, probably Mac Jones. I'll take Tua just because we're in a better scenario here. I'll take Tua over Mac Jones. Mac Jones' uh, weapons don't even. Mac Jones' weapons don't add up to Mike Gesicki, much less. Right, but you're not you're not going to take him over Russell, Stafford, Lance, probably. Um, T Law, probably not. You got you got to take the upside of what of what T Law could be. I think. Yeah, I'll still um, stick with Trevor. Right. I'm not gonna. What and about then, and then, what about this year's guy, Malik Willis? I don't know. That's a, that's a tough call. Which, yeah. No, no you, one I really mean, knows a ton about Malik Willis. Nobody would Everyone trade the knows one one for every... Malik Willis. So I mean, that's just nobody or for nobody would trade the one one for Tua. Like, right. This is yeah, not happening. Beyond, so you're yeah. keeping Malik. Yeah. So he doesn't really. But at least rise. keeping the opportunity to take Malik and I the can turn one, it into three two whatever I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and and you know you could you could who else is kind of in the tier for us there maybe maybe a Jalen Hurts kind of guy but I'm I gonna go take two they're overs. probably both on you got probably one more year to see if this is gonna happen you've surrounded two with everything you could get and and Hurts hasn't quite been there yet and you're gonna give me the legs with Hurts yeah I'm gonna I'm just gonna stick with Hurts if if you're gonna say both of these guys are maybe on kind of let's just call it one year deals here yeah to see if we're gonna get another chance yeah I'm gonna go ahead and take Hurts because of the running ability he's already and, been and that he's he's a top quarterback he's producer giving it to you with and the the wheels were off of the Eagles offense last year first right. four or five games somehow they put him back on right we'll stay on Tua but just Hurts Hurts really weathered the storm with that offensive coordinator coach situation with the Eagles last year. Yeah, so I mean, uh, I don't know that I'm elevating Tua a, a, a ton in any super flex rankings per se. I would trade for Tua if somebody's still down on him because uh, maybe there's a guy out there who I think is a Tua flex. hater, but he he sees that hey now I, I maybe I could have never moved this guy before, but now I got an opportunity, to, and he might maybe trade him for a little less than Agreed. what could possibly be had. And I think there's definitely a window there for opportunity for everything you just laid out with Tua, and then given Tyreek just fuel you know fuel to the fire here right. in Superflex. One quarterback is kind of muddied up. Who cares? It's two quarterback. Why wouldn't you want to take a stab on trying to bring in a cheap Tua before he hits the field? And all of a sudden, I mean, he started all the games last year and did fine. Well, not all. You know. He got an injury. Well, other than injuries, right. but he wasn't benchable. Right. Right. And he his best games were against some weaker competition when he hit his stride towards the man. You know, it's an NFL team. I don't want to hear that. I know, but I'm saying, but it was back to back to back. It was some. It was some suspect teams. Just like teams. David Montgomery two years. It was ago. well. It was against the Giants and the Jets and these guys. This and that. It was Jags, a back to back to back to back. But, still. but he still hit. You know, I'm just saying, like I think Tua and Superflex is a really good buy and opportunity now before we get too much more momentum. 
Yeah, and I, and I think, again, I think a lot of people just hate him. So anybody who was probably holding him was probably thinking that they were just going to have to, he's going to have to die on his sunk, roster. Yeah, that and now that value. might maybe take a little less than what the value might should be uh, to just be like, hey, I got rid of Tua. Uh, Great. So, yeah, I mean, we got a whole new system here with Tua, which I think he can ex- ex- really excel in with a really smart coach and, and, and better protection this year. Um, and we add a Tyreek Hill, who's one of the best in the game. Um, and we add we have Waddle, who's fantastic. So let's get into Waddle. How do, what does this do for Waddle? Um, I mean, for me, I, if there's any sort of dip in Waddle, I'm I'm gonna go ahead and buy. Got to try. Um, and I don't think it moves really Waddle down any for me because I'm just gonna stick with as dumb as it is and as sim- simple minded as it is. This was the QB's guy already, and yeah. he's probably gonna remain the QB guy. I get it. You just paid Tyreek a whole lot of money, like. But let's just let's say you have the the T Higgins and uh, Chase Edmond or uh, Jamar Chase scenario here. Right. I believe uh, T Higgins missed three games and would have out targeted Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase was just really good with the fucking targets that he got. Right, right. And I suspect that it's going to be kind of similar. So, like, you could kind of have the best of both worlds. Hey, Waddle gets the volume and is going to be the guy, and and Tyreek is probably still going to get a decent amount of volume, but probably going to be pretty efficient. Like, who are you sticking here? Like, right. Well, that's, that's true. And then also, if it is the Dolphins and they Dolphin, and they're not too good. Tyreek maybe checks out. He's not playing with Patrick Mahomes. That respect level for his quarterback had to drop. Right. He might, you know, he might come in there and you can say, "Hey, man, as a man, Tua is as respectable as anybody in the league." But as an accomplished quarterback, he's way, right. he's down here and he's got to earn his way up. We know, we all know how it goes. If you start losing, if you know, Tyreek hadn't had done a whole lot of losing. He mm-hmm. came into the Chiefs. They had Alex Smith. They were winning. They were going to playoffs every year. Been to the Super Bowl or AFC Championship three Every years t- in a row. Tyreek don't lose. He hasn't hasn't lost. Right. All of a sudden he gets in, you know, gets in the Dolphins helmet and he loses three games in a row. So that's good for Waddle. Is what you're Great saying? Great for Waddle. Great for Waddle. The stability of Waddle being there. Yeah. So yeah. Waddle's already been in the. Waddle's shit. already been. Waddle's in already the, been in the shit. He's already been in a seven a game losing streak. They yeah. started one and seven last year, yeah. and they turned it around. He was with two the whole time, and then when they did, when they were winning, that back half of the season is when he was eight catches, eight catches, nine catches, ten catches, eight catches. That was him, and that was him and Tua. Which Waddle Merck last year? If you didn't know, he was wide receiver thirteen as a rookie. Uh, though that's in total points. I so he, I think he um, missed one game with COVID, maybe. Yep, and then fifteen point four points per game. That was tied for fifteenth. Uh, ADP of 13 in March, so that's probably going down, which that was creeping There's up. Your buying opportunity where it was properly right rated, there. and now you're going to get properly some, some rated. Value, I think, uh, you know, 138 targets, that was 10th, 104 receptions, 7th for 100, 1115 yards, that's 22nd. Low yards per reception because of bad A dot, 9.8, tied for 33rd. Six touchdowns, though, strong for a rookie. One rushing touchdown. And uh, 11 missed force tackles. That was tied for 16th. Didn't even really get loose in the yak. Like, didn't get right. super, super loose. So you got a target rate of 26.2. That's 23. And there was a target rate for Tyreek at 29.7. There's going to have to probably be a slight dip in probably both of theirs a little bit. Um, but I think they can both be still plenty, plenty strong in what they can do. And now you have Miami, who last year was eighth in pass attempts at 615. And the San Francisco number, which is where Mike's coming from, the head coach, uh, was at 29. Right. I don't think you're going to see Miami at 29. The The Niners don't necessarily want to be at 29. Yeah. They kind of have to be at 29. But look at how efficient they were with Debo and Kittle. Both of those guys, when they're on the field, are startable assets and, and really good and efficient with just those guys being 29th in attempts. You ratchet that up to middle of the pack in attempts, now all of a sudden you probably can support three guys and two of them probably being pretty high end. I'm a little torn. Like, if McDaniel's going to get his shot to come out here and, and get out from under the shadow of Shanahan. But, you know, Shanahan will run it 12 times in a row if you can't stop it. Right. Not a lot of coaches in the league. Well, Mike's, Mike's going to do be the same way. Not they a lot just of, brought in the Edmonds and Moster. I know. I know. I'm just saying not a lot of coaches. Not, no, no other coach in the league has the stomach to do that unless right. they're up by 30 late in the fourth quarter. Right. You know? Not only do they bring in 
Mostert, who was a guy on the team, and they bring in Wes Welker, who was the wide receiver coach over there, who Debo credits a lot with making him into the guy that he is. Nice. They bring in an assistant head coach who, used to, who was a slash the tight ends coach. So they're bringing in culture pieces as well as a Raheem Mostert mm-hmm. and other guys mm-hmm. to, to make this transition as smooth as possible and, and have a locker room. And mm-hmm. again, you said Tua was you know a great a great guy. You didn't hear a fucking peep out of that man last year when there was all sorts of negativity going on. Hey, we're getting Deshaun. Hey, maybe maybe Flores doesn't like him. Yada, yada, yada. Hey, we want to do this, which, you know, I'm never going to begrudge anybody for trying to upgrade any position. And, and you're getting your paid professional athletes. So sure. Almost no team in the league shouldn't have been trying to get Deshaun. If it's you're a business. Right. It's a business. It's a business. It had one day of it. And Baker Mayfield wrote a letter and said, right. I'm out. So that, that just tells you the kind of man that, that Tua is. So, all right, let's 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 go back to the ranking. I just wanted to give Tua kind of paint a picture of the things that are coming in to happen with this offense. Lend pretty well to what Tua has going on with all the things that we talked about. And I think there's a little bit more meat on the deep ball bone than people may want to admit to. Uh, <laughs> he's, not, he's certainly not going to be Patrick Mahomes, the Josh Allen. Deep ball boom. <laughs> he's certainly not going to be Josh Allen or, or, or Mahomes, but, or, or Herbert, but he doesn't have to be like, he could, he could be Matt Ryan. And remember when Matt Ryan was with what, Kyle Shanahan, when, when was the Kyle, MVP? When, I was about to say, and, and Mike McDaniels, like, Look, look at what dogs came back at halftime when the bourbon ball. I heard Colin Cowherd (laughs) make this point the other day when I was uh, at work. I'm always listening to whatever's on the radio. Like he just happens to be on the radio here. Um, And he was saying, you know, look what happens when you move from defensive coach to offensive coach Stafford. Best season was with Caldwell moves over to McVay. All of a sudden he's erupting like Rogers. You know, scruffy with McDaniel's. Lafour comes in. Sure. Hackett's in there. Mike Mc- really blossoms. Mike get, McCarthy. McCarthy. Not McCarthy. We're we're yeah, on you McDaniel. Get, you get Burrow and you get Zach Taylor, who's from that same tree. Boom, blossoms. There might, um, might not be two more opposite coaches: Mike McDaniel, Mike McCarthy. Matty Ice, best season with Shanahan. Shanahan and that those those good offensive minds. Defensive like, you know, guy just, comes in. Quinn comes in. Buries him. Right. So, Julio, he gets older. Julio right. gets older. Those team, those things went together. But, yes, Matt, Matty Ice never had a powerful arm. And it bottom fell out the last two years of him being able to get it downfield. He was a, still a highly accurate intermediate thrower. What can Tua do? Right. I think he could be, you know, probably at least on that level. Um, and which was an MVP level, which, you know, if, if what you got surrounding you, if he can, I will can say that Matty, I, I mean, that was a 30 year old Matty ice, right. 29 year old mental prime sure. Matty ice. We still got a very young Tua, but in a new system, you know, that was the second year with Shanahan with Matty ice that that blew up. It kind of maybe, you know, I'm not, maybe Tua's MVP at a league two years from now. Yeah. It's very possible. Yeah. So, all right. So let's get back to Tyreek. Let's, let's go ahead and is put he, him. Is he staying in tier two? I, I think we've already decided that he's out of out of out of that clubhouse with the other receivers. He could be at the of, bottom of the tier. He doesn't have to be. Well, I mean, I think let's I think take if it we, to tier three. Then, if we're talking about, uh, let's say Diggs, would you rather have Diggs or Tyreek? That's a good question. So maybe they belong right beside each other. Well, that's kind of what led me to this discussion here and talk, really spurred this whole thing was that after we got into there, would you Debo, would you swap Debo? I mean, I want our Diggs, patrons if did. Diggs, if Diggs doesn't weasel his way out of my uh, Buffalo for a huge contract now that all the other, these other wide receivers are getting paid, I'll take Diggs with Josh Allen yeah. over the, over right. for, you know Tyreek with Tua. Would you swap Debo for for Would you swap Tyreek for Debo right now? If you yeah, could? I'd take Debo. Yeah, yeah. although. Yeah, I'll take Debo. Would you rather have DJ Moore or Tyreek? Tyreek. Probably Tyreek. Would you rather have Devontae Adams or Tyreek? Devontae. Cup or Tyreek? Cup. Cup all day. Come how on. Many, Come on. How old is Cup? 29. 29. You're a year, a year older than... A year yeah. older than Tyreek. I feel like Tyreek's got a lot more football left in him if he wants to play. I don't think physically Cup's going to. Cup's not going anywhere. He's got Stafford. Mentally, was, Cup's going nowhere. Physically, I, a Cup can't. Doesn't look like he was going anywhere. It looked like he was going to the moon. <laughs> he did average 25 he points a game He went to the moon. He, he, beat, he beat your best running back. That's what yeah, he did. I, I mean, I, yeah. I guess he was I an could. RB1 in your wide receiver spot. Yeah. yeah. Cup all day. That's too easy. 
Chris Chris Godwin or I mean we're not t- then redraft his cup all day, but I don't think it, there I don't think it's too off, easy. Give me the guy with Stafford who just averaged twenty even even Tyreek with Patrick Mahomes at seventeen points a game. That's an extra touchdown. And, and I would, I mean, the catch. Cup can't the cup's not good. They just Let got, him regress just got Allen a Robinson. Bit. He's not doing that again. He just got Allen Robinson. He's not repeating. Man, they had Cup's they not had repeating Woods what they just now did. It, Woods got Odell. hurt. They had Woods Odell. got hurt halfway yeah, through the season. Then Odell came in. All right, From, this isn't a Cooper Cup discussion. Cooper Cup regresses. <laughs> he definitely regresses. Well, you're trying to say you want Tyreek over Cup then? That was That's the fine. point. Just say it's more of a toss. You just said it was too easy. It's definitely not too, too easy. easy for me. So Godwin or Tyreek? Godwin. Tyreek. I think, I think the fact that Godwin just stayed with Tommy in Tampa. Is really, Tommy still oh, yeah. one Tommy year. was Don't gone. It wouldn't even be close. But sure. it's just one more year, you know, and Tyree. Maybe two. He already threw back out there the two. Bruce Arians is gone now. He just said, hey, I, I, I'll still play. I don't want to play for him. Uh, last one, T. Well, not last one. T. Higgins or, or Tyreek? T. Is it T? Yeah. It's T. Yeah, I think so. They said. It's 22, they, 23. They said that, that, that Leftwich and Brady would be in here getting all this game plan and stuff together. And then when. Uh, Big Bruce. Bu- Bruce came in. He just redlined everything out and pissed him off. And it, like Brady was just checking out. He was like, "I can't take this shit. I've been, I've, we've been working way too hard on yeah. this." I can't and believe you, they didn't make Leftwich. You, the coach. you come in and redline all this stuff. Me and Leftwich been over here doing this, yeah. getting all this stuff together, and you gonna come in here and just redline it all out? That Leftwich, he's gone. He's gone. Yeah, I think. I think. Uh, would you rather have Deontay Johnson or Tyreek? Tyreek. I think if there's no quarterback there's no question qu- yeah, with DJ Moore or Deontay Johnson, I think I would probably take both of those guys over Tyreek. I still know, probably taking DJ Moore over Tyreek. You, you know I've become you know I've become in the last couple of years. You know Deontay become yeah. my boy. I mean, I wasn't all over him out of college like you were, but I've become a Deontay guy big time. And but he's I don't know about Trubisky getting him the ball. Yeah. All right. So let's get let's get back to so we, we so we've definitely moved Tyreek down at least a tier. We're on par and he maybe could even slide down to the top of the, the next tier for us. So he's probably moving down third, fourth round uh for us about. Yeah, I don't think he I mean he's definitely he's a great third round pick. Um so how about let's, like go, let's go to Adams. Waddle. I'll take Devontae first, but he's right. either one of those guys being your third best player on your team, quote unquote. That's not bad. Well, you just got to, you just got to, just like we're talking about with Waddle, a good transition with him being to his guy. You got a guy who's his guy with Devontae Adams and, right. and, and Carr. Like it's they're no familiar question. with each other. They live next to each Best other. Friends. They love each other. Like, Went to college they together. love each other. <laughs> <laughs> there might be video of them saying that. That's all, I need, to, all sure. I need to see. Um, so Jalen Waddle for me, I think, I think he's kind of staying, got to stay right up there. I would, I, I still like Waddle over most of the guys we just talked about. Is there any guys? Would you rather have DK or Waddle? Mm, mm, mm. I guess Waddle. That's tough, man. DK. I'm, I could go DK because Big Co said DK. I'll stick. <laughs> I could flop. <laughs> I'm sticking Waddle. I'm sticking with my guy. So, I mean, I'm probably you know if you wanted to say T, you know, because of tied to Young and tied to Barra Burrow, I I could be okay with that. Which, but for those all of you guys those looking- other guys, all those other guys, I'm taking Waddle over him. We're looking at our tiers. We're working on tiers up here. I don't think you can read this because it's a little blurry, but these are going to be for the patrons, and we're talking it over here on the on the. Oh, the free somebody's show zooming in pleasure. right now on that. I don't real. think you can really see. It's, it's a little. Well, it's a little it blurry. How about you they guys? So I, I feel pretty. And good it about, changes. I feel pretty good about <laughs> Waddle. Where do you guys? Who, who, where's your line of demarcation? On Waddle? Yeah. It's a fine line where he is. He's. I mean, I don't think he. I, I said. The dynasty holds. We got to move T up into tier two for me, and then I can have Waddle still in that tier. You're taking T over Waddle. Yeah. Well, you're Clemps. You, you, that's you. Take T out of the conversation for you, bro. You got you got an orange shirt on. He was it. out of the conversation T. for him coming out of college, which even is the though, funny part. That's not even, even though it's an orange shirt. All the case. Even though it's an orange shirt, still it's, a, it's still orange. You got a purple hat on. You know, I barred your glass. Listen, your glass here says. Tiger Town Tavern. Yeah. Shout I mean, out to Tiger Triple T's, baby. You know what's up. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, T had like a better year than Waddle. And it's only going to, it's probably not going to get better for Waddle this year. And T's got Barra. Barra. I like it. All right. I don't think that's a homer pick there. I think that's just. So let's, let's wrap this up with. Wrap it. With what I think. 
could potentially be kryptonite for these guys. Mm. Okay. Mm. I wonder what we were getting to. Is Gusecki... Gusecki. Gusecki's either going to be kind of the... the yeah, Still serviceable, but but not great one-year deal, or he's just going to fucking kill one or, or both of these guys. Last year, he was he was the, the air yards guy for... Miami uh, for, for Tua. Mm-hmm. Um, his A dot for tight ends was nine point one. That's good for six deep targets. He was good for for number six, I believe. His air yards were number three. Target share number nine. The only thing we have here is a little bit of snap slot share, uh, slot snap share. That all these guys kind of work a pretty high percentage out of the slot. So something's gonna they're gonna be all over the have to give. Place. But yeah, I agree. They're gonna be in the, the backfield. They're gonna right. be lined up in the backfield. They're gonna, gonna be in a clubhouse <laughs> <laughs> and the ball. be all over that shuffleboard. <laughs> <laughs> you think you can keep me out of Del Boca Vista? Del Boca Vista. <laughs> um. But so I think it's either, Gusecki's either going to come in there and just absolutely rob these guys of, of just big, big chunks of like, hey, really could have put you over the over your day of being awesome. And Gusecki just comes in and just continues. You're like, God, God damn it, Gusecki again. Damn it, Gusecki again. Uh, which him and Tua have a decent chemistry, had 111 targets and, and caught uh, 73 of them. So that's good for five out at a tight end. So um Really a big bummer that they kind of brought him back as far as everybody else's progression here. Um, whereas, as well as Chase Edmonds, who's a good pass catching back, which the Niners didn't really throw to the backs a ton, but we knew that they are willing to throw to the backs a ton. They just didn't quite do so last year. Yeah. Um, and Chase Edmonds a good, a good, and like you mentioned, you know, you get rolling, Mostert's healthy. Mostert's one of those guys, he's gashing you, just keep giving it to him. Yeah, and I mean... Gusecki's so, not going to be thoughts on like this. you said. It is really all depends on what Daniels draws up here because he's not going to be in the trenches blocking like Kittle, right? Not even close. No, he's a uh, wide receiver. Yeah, so it, the same type of conversation you had last year going in: does Debo eat and does Ayuk eat and does Kittle eat and they all can't eat at the same time? And you know, best ball fine, but r- plug them in your lineup is going to be tough. Obviously, Debo ran away with that. Who's going to run away with the Dolphins? Right. It could be middle. It could be two really good wide receivers. Neither one of them necessarily great because Debo was doing so much out of the backfield and just dominated the team. But I just, I don't, I don't know. I just, again, McDaniels gets out from under Kyle and says, it's my show now. Everything we did together was awesome. And here's how I see it. Obviously, Gusecki's a weapon. But he's not a he's not gonna he, you know part of Kittle's downfall of his fantasy value is he's so good of a blocker he's in there blocking. Who I, well and him and Debo also have that like we're gonna give you every single thing on every single play so they go limping off a lot. Yeah, uh, they, limp they back. come back they in. come back in they a come decent amount, in. but sometimes they don't. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but sometimes they don't. It it, uh, it comes down to Tua for me in the scheme because if you look at the 49ers which you said they were 29th in attempts they basically spread that around three guys right yeah. the tight end and the two wide receivers Ayuk, Debo and Kittle so it's going to be the so same you, kind so of thing here so if you up here. that, that those attempt up numbers those attempts, in the middle of the pack which we can the Dolphins were 8th up. and now we're, we were at 29 with the Niners if we could just get to like 15 right it right. really did. so I mean I think if there's more attempts I think I think they can fac- facilitate and it, it is just a one year deal for Gasecki so I don't think they should let you dynasty if they rock in a lot of two back sets or too tight I mean, or or you know it depends on if Gasecki just plays a lot of slot if he's like big slot no matter what if we're going to go three wise and Gasecki's one of them then he's I mean, out. They there. can move any of those put, wide receiver or running backs out, out wide wide yeah. big guy yeah be interesting to could see be the, the deployment. Could be the, 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 could the be the de- red zone killer. The deployment and the uh, pass attempt allocation on this team is going to be, uh, again, a, an, a window opportunity to buy Tua because it really can't go down from here. Mm-hmm. So, excuse me, your investment in Tua now is very safe with a the floor that he has always had, which is, you know. If it doesn't work out for him, though, he's, it's probably his last year playing. I mean, maybe. The there's, there's starters out there. This, yeah. I mean. I agree, Jason. With the Dolphins, sure, but yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. The Colts will take him. <laughs> the, skins the skins would skins would take him. The Commanders, Steelers might take him. You know, Trubisky. Yeah. There's, I don't think they're sticking with your bitch. The Seahawks would take him today. There's there's a, there's a couple spots left. 
But with and there's a couple more guys getting older. But, but it's, it's going to be after this year, and if he doesn't succeed with this plethora of a, of accoutrement around him, I, I don't know if he leaves this team and gets better weapons. Right, right. So it's it's like kind of a it's the same thing with Jalen Hurts. It's a great argument for why you should take Jalen Hurts over Tua in Superflex, but. I, I think yeah. it could work. I'm excited. It's yeah, I do too. TV. We got to wrap this up so I yeah. can send an offer for Tua. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, before this thing hits the waves. Let's wrap it up. We'll be we'll be going over more free agent stuff here. Uh, we'll be tossing out kind of the same deals with just kind of reviewing teams. We're going to hit, hit some Broncos action right after this. Yeah. And uh, make, make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you're five-star review and get all this uh, podcast or YouTube subscribe so you get this all right to your uh, phone or computer whenever yeah. you open that bitch up. Spotify, iTunes, baby. Go over there, hit that five stars, just tap it. iTunes, just baby. Just tap it. <laughs> that greatly right helps us out. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Head over to Patreon and you want to join some live mocks, get on the Discord channel, get your questions answered, chat it up with a lot of like-minded people. It's always good to run shit by people. You need yep. help. Let's talk it out. Let's figure it out. So, appreciate y'all joining us, and we'll see you next time. Revelrybrewing.com for tees. Oh, yeah. Hit Boom. the t-shirt. Revelrybrewing.com. <laughs> hit the shop up. Mic drop. Mike them.